I'm Erin Ryder, news editor of The Horse, your guide to equine health care. We're here at the 54th Annual Convention of the American Association of Equine Practitioners. We're joined today by Dr. Dennis Brooks, who's a veterinary ophthalmologist at the University of Florida. Dr. Brooks, thank you so much for joining us today. Would you mind telling our readers what are corneal ulcers? Well, the, the horse has a big, beautiful eye, and the, the anterior or front part of it is called the cornea. It's really large. It's very clear and transparent. It's very shiny. And it's made of layers. And when some of the layers are removed, either from trauma or pathology, when you lose a few layers, that's called an ulcer. You can have a superficial ulcer when just a few layers are missing, or you can have almost an entire cornea missing, and we call that a deeper ulcer. And how are these traditionally treated? Well, over the years, most, most veterinary, vet, veterinarians and veterinary ophthalmologists would just use antibiotics or... Uh, you know, some sort of ointment, some sort of salve, and uh, that was the traditional therapy, and we found out that that was hardly meeting the medical standards of care. And what we found was is that when a horse has an ulcer, the cells in the cornea are damaged, and they release little chemicals that release enzymes. And these enzymes are released in too, too high of a level, and they begin to digest the cornea. So we found that if we used anti-enzyme drugs, which happen to be very, very cheap actually, if we use anti-enzyme drugs, we could actually speed the healing. So the medical standard of care was changed in a sense that veterinarians should use antibiotics, uh, anti-inflammatories, and, and also anti-enzyme types of, of, of drugs in order to speed up the healing and reduce the scar tissue formation. And what are some other new treatment options? Well, the other most exciting part of, of this therapy was that we found that the anti-enzyme or anti-proteases, that the easiest one to use was just using the horse's own blood, which so they had, a plenty, they had plenty of blood and you can't, couldn't beat the price and it was actually very effective. The second thing that was new and also easily available was using part of the foal's placenta and taking the amnion, which is part of the placenta, and actually either suturing it or gluing it to the adult horse's cornea when there was a very deep ulcer. And that also had anti-enzyme effects and anti-scarring properties. And uh, we found that that was extremely beneficial at, at, at improving the sight of horses who had ulcers that would otherwise have, have lost the eye and been blind. Is there anything that horse owners can do to prevent ulcers from occurring? Well, that, that I wish I knew the answer to that. I think a lot of times it's traumatic, and who, and, and who can, who can uh, stop their horse from being clumsy? Uh, but I, I'm not aware that, it, it, well, the only thing is, is common sense. Uh, make sure the stall and pasture, or paddock, wherever they're at, doesn't have sharp objects around, either tree limbs or uh, agricultural equipment or just nails sticking out. Uh, of the fences and so it's just a matter of common sense and trying to minimize their exposure to sharp objects but sometimes the horses manage to injure, injure themselves anyway and, and all, all a person can do is, is, is do the best they can. And where can horse owners go for more information? Well the simplest thing is is probably go to the, to the, the literature either books or uh, the internet and uh, there are several websites one of them is uh, uh, www.blindhorses.org, which has some good information. And these people have a tremendous passion for reducing the, uh, the number of blind horses. There's another one called uh, uh, the valianttrust.org, uh, valianttrust, one word, .org. And that also talks about blindness in horses and how to reduce the chance. And they contact their local veterinarians. And, and, I mean, I have my own website at the University of Florida, which is you can easily find it. And it has a whole lot of PowerPoints on corneal disease and uveitis disease and eyelid disease. And so the Internet is probably the simplest thing. Uh, and there's a lot of information out there, I think, at the moment. Thank you so much. For more coverage on Dr. Brooks's presentation at the Healthy Horses Workshop and all of the sessions here at the AAP convention, go to thehorse.com.